Recently, there's been a lot of discussion about how certain leading edges of science are rediscovering the mystical dimension. In physics, we find the strange world of photon entanglement. In neurophysiology, the processes of memory and altered states of awareness. In astronomy, the theory of black holes, antimatter, and inflating universes. And in biology, the intricate code of life, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, and the development of forms, morphology. But the rediscovery of that which remains unknown is a changing proposition and reflects more on our own limited cranial capacities than on what the universe or multiverse ultimately portends. In other words, the deep mystery we must first confront is epistemological. We have a tendency to conflate our neurology for ontology and as such tend to inflate the world around us with our own unrecognized projections, which may or may not be accurate. And since we are stuck to such map making, we are circumscribed to biological syllogism that on the surface seems intractable. All maps, by definition, are less than the territory to which they point, and thus have gaps. And if all maps invariably have gaps, then all such designs are inevitably, even if only partially, mistaken. What this means, of course, is that all our images that we make about the world are potentially wrong, because there are not perfect transparencies. This is why science always rediscovers the unknowable, because no matter how sophisticated our maps may be, they will have a gap in them, which will reveal something hitherto undiscovered. This is also why Karl Popper's notion of falsifiability serves us so well when appraising most scientific theories. We know a priori that human speculations, even if amazingly well grounded in physics or math, are always liable to error. It is this liability which, ironically, allows science to progress. A new technological product, for instance, isn't accepted as flawless, but is rather closely examined by hackers and others to reveal some uninspected flaws. And because of this ongoing dialectic, we have seen breathtaking changes in a variety of objects, from computers to cars. What this means is that even if we forego religion and spirituality and offer a purely materialistic understanding of what surrounds us, we are still touching moment to moment a mystery that transcends our ability to grasp it. Which brings us to that most revealing of queries. Who or what is living us right now? Who or what is beating our hearts? Who or what is firing our neurons? Several immediate answers come to mind, of course, ranging from Jesus to biochemistry. But when we closely inspect how our bodies operate, we soon realize that our eye has very little to do with the day-to-day -day functions of our lives. We don't consciously grow the hair on our hands or digest our food. We witness something that supersedes us even as it literally lives us. Whatever that is, of course, is unknowable in its entirety. Thus, we don't know what a single thing is. We don't know where we are. And we don't know who or what is actually living us. We live in a mystery, even as we act as if nothing is mysterious.